The sad story of DLF customers started in the year 2009 when DLF in response to the slowdown relaunched the DLF Western Heights projects in Bengaluru. They announced an initial attractive price with a strategy of capturing the customers for now and later squeezing out much much more from them. DLF India's largest real estate developer a real estate giant had the reputation of transforming Gurgaon from a farming village to a commercial real estate hub thereby changing Gurgaon's destiny DLF had created a brand value for itself and here's how they exploited this brand value in enticing the customers attractive videos were shown detailing the complex to international standards with clubhouse and other facilities colorful brochures were provided beguiling and entrapping the customers they impressed on the customers that dlf was a reputed builder had an excellent track record had been there done that with only 3 years delivery schedule and the payment clauses tied to the project progress they even agreed to provide compensation for the delay impressed by their sales pitch the customers thought dlf would transform bengaluru south on similar lines as gurgaon So it's a good proposition to invest the reason little did the customers realize there was a lot unsaid between the lines DLF had succeeded in trapping the customers and selling their dream. There was a huge rush to book the apartments. Customers trusted the company and paid the advance booking amount to the tune of 3 to 5 lakhs thus sealing their fates irrevocably. After collecting the advance booking amount, the sale agreement was issued in a printed format. which said that if the lot made any modifications in the agreement the company will cancel the agreement and the amount paid earlier towards booking will have to be forfeited that is the buyer's basic right to verify and review the agreement before signing it was denied aba the apartment buyers agreement is an exploitative contract containing unfair clauses imposed with impunity and brutal disregard to consumer rights it's a totally one sided contract customers had no choice but to sign it in the fear of losing their huge booking amounts then began the saga of payment of installments as and when demanded by dlf with very little notice period given to the customers to arrange for the huge amounts most of the buyers meanwhile paid their installments on the demanded deadline with fear of forfeiture and penalty for delayed payments which was up to the tune of 18% however on the other hand a delay by dlf attracts a compensation of only 5 rupees per square feet this is another one sided clause by the builder customers who were treated like kings earlier to signing the contract have now become captured consumers and are being subjected to abuse by DLF through imposition of unfair conditions contained in the agreement the unequal power equation between the builders and the home buyers is being exploited by DLF to the fullest extent innocent customers were not even aware that the project was launched without even having all the approvals in place while bds approval was obtained to build up to four floors the advertisements shown were for 19 floors and for some stay bbmp master plan anna ullangane maadi apartment nirmana maadide anta bmtf hago lokayukta vishesha court nalli dooru dakhalagide naviga beguru raste illi iruva yenu dlf apartment anna nam nodabodu sumaru 18 floor gal iruva apartment anna niviga kanabodu illi sumaru 1800 manegalanna nirmana maadi kodalagide aadre nijavagiyu bbmp ivarige 2007 na isv alli age ondu nalaku floor plus ground floor 95% of the amount was collected by DLF by 2012 their promised 3 year delivery deadline but most customers are waiting to even have a glimpse of their flats even to this day 
The project is now delayed by more than three years and the customer funds have been diverted into launching other DLF projects. There is no transparency in the status or the funds utilization leading to huge trust deficit. There is no participatory mechanism put in place to deal with price escalations, customer pain points, etc. There is a whole spectrum of bias affected from retired seniors who have invested all they had in the hope of quality life, youngsters in their beginning of their careers who have taken huge loans, dooming their future into a life of financial slavery, families who have also taken huge loans in the hope of quality life for their children. All this because of the facilities like the clubhouse, the hospital, school and safety etc. promised by DLF. Most parents admitted their children to schools close to DLF by 2012, hoping they would get their flats. With the effect that they are now forced to rent out houses close to DLF and travel all around the city. The losses suffered are compounding day by day. In addition to loss due to the interest on pre-EMI to the tune of 50,000 rupees a month and loss due to non-exemption from income tax, they have to bear an additional rent expense, an average of 25,000 rupees a month. Thus, financial debts are increasing beyond control and the pressure is becoming unbearable for most of them. Desperation is mounting among the buyers, protests, dharnas and hunger strikes have become a part of their lives, affecting their personal lives and quality of lives. However, unfortunately, none of this has evoked any positive response from DLF. We are not getting the point. Already mails have been sent. We have met you three or four times and we have some very point blank four or five questions and none of these has been answered in email or in letter or nothing. I tell you, there, is a, there, is, there was a couple of reasons for the delay and which, which causes the delay. Okay, okay. Still, no, still, you tell me one thing. You or anybody from DLF authority has, has anybody replied when you for you? No. DLF has formed an owner's association with their own employees and are demanding that at the time of registration of the flat, the customers deposit money into that account, apparently as maintenance money before registration of the flat. Out of the total 16 blocks, two blocks were handed over. These flat owners got their peanuts delay penalty via check attracting an additional 30% TDS cut. This was in spite of the fact that as per the agreement, it was to be adjusted against the last installment. On the other hand, at the time of registration, DLF is demanding 30% higher than its quoted price in the agreement. Martin Luther King famously said, Freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. A man may lose what are his clearest rights by not demanding them. The customers are now demanding what is rightfully theirs and that is We paid 95% of the amount 3 years back Now you deliver to your promise which is the clubhouse with all the amenities promised in 75,000 square feet as per your advertisements and brochures Compensate us for the financial losses we have suffered Delayed penalty should be commensurate with the running rate in the locality which is 25 rupees per square feet. All increases in taxes, registration, stamp duty, cost of material, etc. occurring from 2012 should be rightfully borne by the party responsible for the delay. In this case, the builder DLF. Every manufacturer of something as cheap as a watch stands guarantee for the quality of their product by providing warranty. And in this case, it is worth tens of lakhs. It's only fair then that the customers are demanding a two years warranty on the entire package delivered by DLF. The top of the list, of course, is hand over the flat as soon as possible. We are sinking into financial debts every day. Financial compensation is only one part of the story. Who can ever compensate the loss of value in these years? Many senior citizens in their evening of their lives who deserve peace and happiness are being made to go through this agony and stress. I was those days. I was just retired from, from my job. I was 60 years old. I got some money. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, living in a township will be good. 
this I have all seen in Delhi. Therefore, I believed. Therefore, I said, okay, this is a company that can be relied upon. Therefore, I paid. I paid the money. That day, after paying that only, we got the shock of the life. That day, after that, every every year, when you go to them, yes, next year we'll give you, next year we'll give you, like that, like that, it goes on. So that is really happening. As and you know, now already I am 66. I am completing 66. I don't know when I will get my flat. This really affects me and not only affects me, affects my wife as well. Because whatever has been promised is not coming. Maybe it will be coming, but I don't know whether it's in my life. Parents are missing out on their children's childhood due to financial tensions, mental agony and constant pursuit of DLF. Children are losing out on the precious grooming time by the parents and the play facilities promised by DLF. In these six years, many children have left their parents' nest. For these parents, many of these facilities may no longer be relevant and thus the perceived value is lost. It is no surprise then that DLF's promoter K.P. Singh was ranked 8th among India's top 10 billionaires in 2010 with a net worth estimated to be $9.2 billion. With financial, political and industry power, the tribulations of the hapless customers seem to be of little significance to him. Dr. Shankar, a leading oncologist in Bengaluru, went on hunger strike for six days without any positive response from DLF. DLF is the market leader, good or bad. DLF sets the trend on the reality sector and other real estate companies will follow the leader. With a leader like DLF, who would require outside enemies to bring the country down? Building India, as they claim, is out of question and a very, very remote possibility. Can we hope that Ache Din Aayenge? Can we hope for good governance and fair practices? Can we hope that real estate thugs however powerful, cannot be above the law. Can we hope for a systemic change wherein people don't have to resort to desperate methods to get attention to the problem and to what is rightfully theirs? Yes, we at DLF have a reason to be hopeful. After Subrata Roy, Chairman of Sahara India, B. Ramalinga Raju of Satyam Computers and many more of them who have been brought to books by the judicial system in our country. We, the 1980 families at DLF Bengaluru, look up to the judicial system and hope that good sense and justice will prevail.